ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll have a look at how producers can get their BQA certification online. Plus, a report on the Responsible Beef Program and its positive impact on cattle feeders. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. One of my favorite things about the cattle industry is the opportunity to get together with other cattlemen, look at great cattle, and build lasting friendships. A great place to do just that is the National Western Stock Show held each January in Denver, Colorado. As Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter tells us, the National Western Stock Show preserves the heritage of the cattle industry while helping to shape the future. Think of the National Western Stock Show in Denver and you might envision cattle in the show ring, blue ribbons, or maybe competition events such as team penning. But since it began back in 1906, the organizers of the National Western Stock Show have worked to make this one of the premier places where producers can advertise, buy, and sell high quality cattle genetics. You know, I think that this is the premier marketing uh, uh, show in the country. Coming here it brings the best cattle and the most discerning customers to Denver to buy those cattle. And additionally, you won't find a semen company uh, here or a health company that isn't here in one way, shape, or form looking to promote their product. Uh, it's where the cutting edge genetics for the beef industry are on display. A lot of people want to buy their genetics from from a program that is similar to theirs. So you have the opportunity to walk through here and find you know, a lot of different people that have goals that until you know find something that's similar to yours at home. Our program is built mostly for the commercial programs that we try to sell bulls to. And this opportunity here, there are more people come here than, than any place else. We've gotten quite a lot of um, exposure and uh, the customers we do have are, well all customers are very valuable, but we've gotten a lot of connections through being here. From all countries, I mean, there's some people from Argentina in here now and we've got all states across the country that come in here, so you get not only is it just the United States, it's Canada, South America, just this morning we've had three or four different countries come through that I can think of. This year, there were more than 15,000 animals on the 100-acre stock show grounds. And the event's continued growth can be attributed partly to the one-of-a-kind atmosphere found and family traditions formed out in the cattle pens of the historic Denver Union stockyards. Well, historically, you know, the stock show started 108 years ago, and it all started in the yards. So there's a lot of history and a lot of roots. We actually have one family that still participates in the stock show that participated in the first one and everyone in between. And they're located uh, in the Castle Rock area, Carnahan Ranches, and they come in and, and bring a commercial pen of heifers every year that, uh, where they show them and sell them in our commercial female sale. Yeah, the, the experience and the history and the heritage, the atmosphere that is provided here in the yards is I've never seen it anywhere else. Besides keeping traditions alive, the National Western Stock Show with its urban Denver location has also become a valuable way to help tell the story of cattle production and to connect consumers with where their food comes from. We have uh, about 10,000 kids will come through here through the school tour program. And it's a good way for what I would call urban or suburban kids to, to get exposed to the livestock industry. We have petting zoos. We've started a new birthing center this year for, for uh, making a connection between agriculture and the city folks, trying to teach them all that we can about where their food comes from, which we all know in, in the cattle business is really important to make that connection. This year, the National Western Stock Show drew a crowd of more than 640,000 people during its 16-day run. From Denver, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. 
learn more about the National Western Stock Show and to view video replays of all of our stories, just visit our website, cattlemanandcattlemen.org. Joining us now to tell us about an opportunity for producers to get BQA certified online is John Robinson, Director of Organizational Communications at NCBA. John, tell us what the Beef Quality Assurance Program is all about. Well, the Beef Quality Assurance Program really is about doing things better. It's a way for producers to learn uh, the next level in animal handling, uh, humane animal treatment, uh, and proper administration of things like medications, uh, vaccinations, things of that nature. Really, it's a way for producers to find new ways to produce more wholesome beef for our consumers. And I understand that there is now an opportunity for people to go online and uh, receive this certification at no charge. Is that correct? That's correct. One of our great industry partners, uh, Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc., stepped forward for the second year this year to sponsor uh, BQA certifications online for producers. It's a value of anywhere from $25 to $50. Uh, producers can go to the website uh, that's sponsored in cooperation with Kansas State University's Beef Cattle Institute to go through the certification process. And you mentioned uh, Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica being uh, such a strong supporter of this program. Program. Why do they stand behind beef quality assurance uh, certification for producers? It's really the right thing to do, Kevin. It's uh, something that's getting a lot more attention out there in the industry. Uh, people are looking for ways to verify that producers are doing things right uh, on the farm, all the way through the feedlot and into the packing plant, just as a way to make sure that we're producing beef in ways that uh, is the proper way to do things, but also in a way that guarantees producers that we're doing things right out there on the farm. So, John, why should producers take advantage of this opportunity? It's really a great time uh, right now for producers to do this. Uh, up until April 15th, as I mentioned, uh, it's free for producers. It's a $25 to $50 value. Last year, about 3,500 producers uh, went online and got certified. We're hoping to increase that number even more this year. Uh, of course, you can do it anytime year-round, uh, but it's a really a good way for producers to brush up on those skills that maybe they're not practicing every day. So for producers who may be watching and are interested in taking advantage of this offer, uh, where would you point them? I would send them to the website, uh, either bqa.org uh, slash team or bivi.com slash bqa. Very good. Thanks, John. You bet. Thank you, Kevin. As John said, signing up for the online beef quality assurance training modules is easy. Just visit www.bivi-bqa.com. NCBA works hard every day to make sure cattle producers have a voice in Washington. We recently asked some members of the cattle industry about the policy issues they're concerned about and the role NCBA plays in addressing those issues. Well, first of all, it's really important to be a member of NCBA because they are the folks that take to Washington our message to make sure that uh, our business is sustainable. Policy and regulation it seems like we are just getting more regulation handed down to us all the time. All we want to do is raise good quality beef and uh, we need a good business environment to do that. And uh, one of the people that I admire most are, are the NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. who are there working for cattlemen every day, every hour of the day. And uh, that's one of the best investments why I make in NCBA is uh, what they can do for me in Washington, D.C. Well, Washington, D.C., uh, that's a little bit of a different environment, but uh, um, it takes years of, of uh, contact with, with your congressional people. Uh, and. Um, I think what's happened over time is that, that NCBA has become very credible uh, with the legislators back there. And uh, whenever they seek out uh, information on, on agricultural uh, issues, uh, they found that, that NCBA is, is one of the sources they can go to and depend on. Uh, and so that's very important. and, and um, if, if one's never been to, to go to the spring conference in Washington, D.C., and, and be able to go and visit with your senators and congressmen and, and go to the USDA and, and visit about a lot of these issues, uh, uh, that's probably one of the more educational and fun things that one will have time to do. The most serious challenge is the failure of our government to, uh, to govern. 
they can't get along, they automatically uh, assume opposite positions no matter what the idea is. And I think if we don't get some change in uh, the government, uh, a lot of industry in this country is serious, in serious trouble. Some of the national issues that we follow with through NCBA, you know, trying to get a fix on the death tax, obviously the farm bill, you know, that, that we just got done and, and some of the things we didn't get and some of the things we did, you know, it'd been really nice if we'd had FSA funded back during the drought, but, you know, so we have, so anyway, we try to keep up with as much of that as we can and, and there again go back to, that's, that's why we need the grassroots involvement so we can be strong in these issues. There are many great reasons to become a member of NCBA, and one of them is the chance to read the National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. And it now includes an online version, which enables you to read the latest issue on the go. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member of NCBA. Joining is easy. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us online at beefusa.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We really felt it was important for uh, producers to find their voice and to tell their story. We'll look at how the Responsible Beef Program is helping cattle feeders. Plus, we'll hear about this year's Cattlemen's College event in Nashville. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD TV. To truck guys, the truck is everything. And when you put them in charge of making an unbeatable truck, good things happen. This is the Ram 1500 the 2014 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. And first ever back-to-back -back winner. Guts, glory, ram. To ensure your seeds become strong stands, give your soil the right preparation before you plant. Improve your growing environment with agronomically designed equipment from Case IH, like the new Ecolo Tiger 875 Disc Ripper, engineered to manage tough residues and shatter root-limiting compaction for improved nutrient uptake and better stands with more fully developed plants at harvest. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? Learn more at caseih.com. Welcome back. Members of the cattle industry know how much time and effort it takes to care for the land and the animals they raise. But that perspective is often not shared by others who are disconnected from the cattle industry. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more on a program designed to help ranchers and cattle feeders tell their story. Cattle men and women play a key role in feeding the world and they work hard to do it. But many consumers struggle to understand how beef is produced or who produces it. That's why it's important for ranchers and cattle feeders to take an active role in connecting with consumers and telling the story of responsible beef production. You don't have to be a professional speaker to do this. You have to be able to shake people's hands, look them in the eye, ask them some questions about what they're interested in, and relate to them on a human basis. It really is as simple as having a conversation, and no one can have that conversation about your role in the cattle business as well as you can. Michelle Payne Canoper works with farmers and ranchers to help them learn the best ways to engage with consumers. It's part of Merck Animal Health's Responsible Beef Campaign. The program was launched in May of 2013 with a vision for empowering cattle feeders to spread their message of responsible beef production. When I look at the Responsible Beef Initiative, it's about empowering cattlemen to take their future in their hands, whether it's for their children, their grandchildren, whatever it may be, and really just to helping them understand that, look, I understand the culture of agriculture is modesty and independence and stubbornness, but that doesn't bode well 
when you need to ha have a conversation about what you're doing on the farm. So it's about helping future generations overcome some of those challenges that we've had in the past in sharing our message effectively. We really felt it was important for producers to find their voice and to tell their story. It's the people who are actually taking care of the cattle, taking care of the lands, supporting their communities, and building their businesses. As Merck Animal Health discussed ideas for the program, four areas of responsibility became top of mind. Your cattle, your land, your community, and your business. When we talk about cattle, I mean, it's, it's everything we do to, to care for the cattle and well-being and care and, and animal health and, and, and looking after the animals to make sure they're comfortable and, and happy. Then we look at land, and, and we're not making any more land. And we all know that if we don't take care of this land, it's not going to take care of us. We can pass it down to future generations. Then we have communities. Communities kind of is my favorite because it really starts with family. And when you look at the cattle industry, it's focused on family. And then the next thing would be employees. And the interesting thing about employees is, is most employees are customers too because you know they, they enjoy a good steak and a, a good hamburger as a meal also. And then you start looking at local communities. You have local communities. It's the hardware store. It's, it's the feed store. It's your barber. It's all the people in your local community that your business supports. Business is the most important, I think, though, because if you don't have a successful business, if, you're, if your business isn't sustainable, these other things don't really matter. And so a lot of people are, are worried about talking about business and, and making money, but really it's pretty important to anybody that you were able to turn that dollar over and keep your business going. My challenge always, whether I'm working with cattlemen, whether I'm working with grain producers, or whether I'm working with scientists, is to simply find an opportunity to tell your story. And that's why I wrote No More Food Fights. When you look at the book and you consider the opportunity to really reach across the plate, in my mind, that's where our opportunity lies, is in the conversation. When Merck invited me to be a part of the Responsible Beef Initiative, it was a lot of fun because the four pillars aligned with No More Food Fights and many of the things that I had covered in the book. To me, it's about being proactive because if you only react, that will be the reference point from which people operate. Whereas if you're proactive and you stand up and you simply share a picture on Facebook or you have a conversation in your church parking lot about, hey, this is what we're doing this week and this is why, people start seeing inside the lives of cattle producers and they realize that they're good people. We'll have more about the Responsible Beef Program when we return. We stand for what we believe in. We believe in you. It's more than a job. It's your way of life. Who you are, where you live, and what you do. The way you treat your cattle, your family, your employees, and your neighbors. The water you drink, the air you breathe, and the ground you walk on. What you do every day gives families something to gather around every night. It's about doing what's right for your cattle, your land, your community, and your business. It's your livelihood, and it means as much to us as it does to you. We all believe in responsible beef. Let's stand together at ResponsibleBeef.com. This isn't a job, it's a calling. Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success.
Welcome back. We're glad to have you with us. Let's return to Nebraska and reporter Brian Baxter with more about the key elements of the Responsible Beef Program. The program began with a series of workshops across the U.S. The workshops included education in both large group settings and with small group hands-on discussions and training. Participants included cattle feeders, veterinarians, and nutritionists, all coming together to learn how to better tell their stories of responsible beef production. Well, we've had responsible beef workshops in the Panhandle of Texas, in Kansas, in Nebraska, and Iowa, really in, in the heart of cattle feeding country. Well, the workshops really came about to, to help people understand these four pillars and also give them a chance to, to learn how to, to find their voice. My hope is that they're armed with the tools to go home and have an effective conversation about agriculture, not only about the cattle business, but really about many of the issues that are happening around the plate. It really helps uh, nutritionists and veterinarians that are working closely with their customers to, to have that voice also. It's interesting to even think about a nutritionist. You know, really they're a, a cow dietitian. Uh, that came out in one of our workshops and, and you just saw the nutritionist all of a sudden go, wow, you know, that's right, I'm the same. And so they can really relate to uh, a dietitian at a hospital or something like this where they can, they can have a, a really cool conversation about beef. The website ResponsibleBeef.com was also launched. It connects cattle feeders through feed yard specific articles, product information, and tools for their trade. The goal is for cattle feeders to feel empowered to discuss their production practices, learn new industry information, and understand Merck Animal Health's commitment to the cattle industry. We talk about what people are doing kind of cool in their, in their cattle feeding operations across the country. So, and, and we have all the pillars there. We talk about cattle, we talk about land, we talk about community, we talk about business. And, and so it supports all those pillars and we rotate new stories in. It's really a way to, to provide people some ideas on how they would talk to maybe their target audience. The Responsible Beef Campaign has been a success with crowded workshops and eager, engaged participants. Merck Animal Health plans to keep providing cattle feeders with the tools they need to spread the positive message of the beef industry. It's been very, very positive. People said, you know, I haven't realized that I needed to really focus on talking to somebody and relating with somebody before I go into talking to them about beef. And I think that was the biggest learning part. Um, one of my favorite things from the workshop that I've learned is it's, it's not what you say, it's how you make people feel is what they remember. My measure of success is if they're doing something differently in a month from now. If they're out there and they're reaching their hand out, whether it would be in a local pub, whether it would be when they're in the, with their extended family at Thanksgiving, or if they're even sharing a photo on Facebook, and simply saying, hey, this is what I did and this is why, that's a huge win. Again, it's about the heart-to-heart -heart connection and it's about the personal conversations. Well, I think the best thing about having cattlemen tell the story is, is that they have a lot of value and they're, and they're the people actually with their, having their boots dirty. If it was me telling the story, it wouldn't mean anything. But it's the people who are actually taking care of the cattle, taking care of the lands, supporting their communities, and building their businesses. Reporting from Omaha, Nebraska, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on the Responsible Beef Campaign, check out their website at responsiblebeef.com. When we come back, a closer look at Cattlemen's College, plus our good friend Baxter Black is still ahead. Stay with us. We'll have more right after this. This is yours, and so is what grows there. Not theirs, or theirs, yours. You need this to fight this, and this to grow more this. Because the more of this you feed them, the less this you spend on that, which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. This business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. 
Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative, which is pull and treat and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. Welcome back. There are many great things to see and do at the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. And one of the most popular events is always Cattlemen's College. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Russell Nemitz takes a closer look at this event and why it's such a big hit among cattle producers. Hundreds of cattlemen and women showed that you're never too old to learn something new by attending the 21st annual Cattlemen's College. Participants heard from an outstanding lineup of industry experts during the course of two jam-packed days. The importance of Cattlemen's College is that it is cutting edge. You're not going to get access to these guys anywhere else in, in America. We've brought them all together. These are the top of the heap guys that these guys make the decisions in companies, corporations, ranches. Cattlemen's College is the largest annually held beef producer education program in the country. The event, which is sponsored by Zoetis, is designed to help producers assess their operations and identify ways to become more efficient while producing beef for today's consumers. Cattlemen's College is very special to us because we actually helped uh, develop the idea 21 years ago. In fact, some of the, my colleagues at Zoetis are still there that helped develop Cattlemen's College. So we've always been very committed to uh, producer education, helping them become better at what they do, helping them become more efficient, and in turn make more money so they can stay in business. There were five concurrent classroom sessions, with each classroom having a specific area of emphasis, like resource management, animal management, ranch management, finance, and business and consumer relations. Spent a lot of my time today in the consumer perception uh, track of Cattlemen's College and really got a lot of great information about telling our beef story and really communicating the benefits of beef and making sure that it meets the mark with our consumer base. Most of the sessions have been real informative. Um, some of the stuff is things we do already, but it's helped me to take another look at, at how we do it or even the things that we're already doing that we already have in place. It's just a good reminder. And there's a lot of new information out that, that I'm getting from it that we can put in place in the operation that we're doing. With so many different classes to choose from, it's hard to decide which sessions to attend. The good news is that Cattlemen's College participants can go online and check out the presentations they missed. They paid the money. We want them to see all the presentations. So what we're going to do, we will email to you as an attendee a link. So it'll come to you as an email message. Click on the link and then you can go to any one of the 16 presentations and sit at your leisure and watch those presentations. It's a safe bet that these innovative and educational sessions will continue to be a highlight of the convention as cattle operators of every size and sector get the tools and tips they need to sustain and improve their operations. And you can also learn how to do things maybe a little bit better. Maybe it reinforces what you're doing now but encourage you to, to, to make a few minor changes in your management program. We're trying to provide uh, uh, programs that keeps our ranchers informed, and that's the biggest part of what we're doing, trying to keep them informed of what's happening in the industry and how to position their farm or ranch so that they can remain sustainable and profitable in the, for the next five or ten years. Reporting from Nashville, Tennessee, I'm Russell Nemitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. It's easy to attend next year's Cattlemen's College. All you have to do is register for the 2015 Annual Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in San Antonio. To learn more, go to the website beefusa.org. Recently in Nashville, the Top Hand Club celebrated the recruitment of nearly 1,000 new members. The club was started in 1982 as NCBA's Member Recruit a Member Program designed to recognize volunteer leaders for their commitment in growing a strong national association. Each year, three high-achieving top hands who help recruit the most new NCBA members are recognized for their efforts. Adam McClung from Little Rock, Arkansas is the 2013 Top Hand Club Champion. 
McClung not only signed up the most new members with 64 recruits, but he also won the Top Recruiter for Revenue Award with a total of $8,000 in recruited dues revenue. We caught up with Adam after winning the award to find out more about his passion for the beef industry and for NCBA. NCBA being our national voice for our cattle industry here in the United States and being the largest producer of cattle organization, it's just, it's, it, it's always been my belief that the policy and, and the good things that we do with the checkoff and with our policy that w that we work through and what we do in D.C. starts grassroots. It starts with the members and, and that's our backbone of our organization. And that's why I do get so passionate about getting more folks involved so we can have that larger voice. You don't have to wait for a Top Hat member to come calling in order to join NCBA. Signing up is easy to do on your own. Just call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beefusa.org. Coming up, we'll bring you management tips for healthy stalker cattle and a tasty recipe for beef green chili. Stay with us. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out beefusa.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at beefusa.org. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family home-cooked meal that's important to me that's important to me and planting the garden and watching it grow hello i'm kevin oxner host of ncba's cattlemen to cattlemen each week we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information check us out at cattlemen cattlemen.org or on facebook and twitter This edition of Cattle Learning Center is brought to you by Novartis. Every segment of our beef industry works hard to maintain healthy cattle, and the stalker segment is known for the ability to manage stress cattle exceptionally well. Brian Seltzer manages CPC Livestock in Kentucky, where they take in well over 100,000 head of stalker animals each year. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck caught up with Seltzer to get his insights into the key factors that contribute to the health of stalker cattle. As cattle step off the trucks and arrive at stalker operations, the animals are in a highly stressed state. To properly manage these cattle, producers must be diligent in providing care to create a smooth transition period for the animals. If we can get fresh feed, fresh water in front of those animals, and get that nutrition in, into the animal, then the vaccines and those other things that we're giving the animal will be more, more beneficial. So, you know, first and foremost, we're gonna talk about nutrition every time that at, when the animal arrives at our place, the first thing we're gonna talk about is nutrition. We need a, a high quality diet in front of them. So we'll, uh, we'll put a pretty high protein diet in front of them during the starting phase. Uh, try to get those animals up and going uh, and then in the grow ration at about 35 days. So uh, we're trying to produce an animal that is ready for the feed yard world, ready being healthy. Cattlemen in stalker operations have long recognized the need to properly care for livestock 
Flexibility is the key, since a busy stalker operation can take in thousands of animals a year, often from many different sources. An experienced manager will evaluate every aspect of the cattle's environment to ensure the animals reach their maximum potential. The little things make a big difference. So look at those things uh, that provide that animal husbandry that we all know as, as uh, cattle producers how to be good stewards of the land and take care of the cattle. But let's remember that that's so important, especially during the first 10 days of that stalker animal coming to your place. Understand if you're horseback or if you're on a four-wheeler, how, how you're caring for the animal. That animal sees you as a predator in the beginning. So he or she has to get comfortable with you and get, make the animal comfortable so that he will begin to settle into your place or she will be, begin to settle into your place and, and be a producer for you. Changes in the beef industry now require cattle to be transported over farther lengths than in previous years. More miles on the trucks means higher stress on the cattle. We are driving as an industry with relocation of animals, with procurement. Cattle are going over longer miles and so we're driving that health to be a bigger concern with some of those things that we're doing to ourselves. You know, we have the best products, continues to boggle my mind with how much better our technology is daily or, or yearly. We, we tend to come up with better products, but yet as an industry, we still see health as a concern. And that's part of what we're talking about is health. For NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, I'm reporter Matt Fleck. For more on keeping your cattle healthy, visit www.ah.novartis.us. Up next, a beef green chili recipe your family is sure to enjoy. And another visit with our good friend Baxter Black that you don't want to miss. Stay with us. We'll be right back. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. 10, 11. I'm a 210, 11. Yes! <laughs> Joe! Todd! How'd you do? Oh! Not bad. See what you have to gain at the longrangelook.com. Like so many cattlemen, I've been out working or feeding cattle on one of those cold winter days, and when the work's all done, you want something to eat that'll warm you from the inside out. And Pam Nash, one of the recipe testers from the Beef Culinary Center, has just the right recipe for us today. Pam, I understand you're going to tell us how to make beef green chili. Yes, Kevin, beef green chili. This recipe is super simple to put together. You use ingredients that you already have in your pantry. Mm -hmm. And best of all, you can use leftover beef. So if you have anything that you didn't eat from last night, you can take it and turn it into beef green chili for tonight. Sounds delicious. I love green chili. Tell us how we get started. So I, what I have going in the pan here is I have have one whole onion diced. Okay. I have a whole jalapeno that's been seeded and diced. Perfect. And I have four cloves of garlic that I have minced. And you get it in your pan and cook it for about five to seven minutes until the onions become translucent and you get a little bit of color on it. No liquid in there? No liquid at all. Just Very get good. it going in there. And once this is all cooked the way you want it, then you can start adding your other ingredients. Very We're going to start with the beef. Here mm -hmm. I have 12 ounces of cubed brisket All from right. last night. We cubed it up and we'll just dump it in. Like you say, lots of alternatives. Roast, whatever. 
Whatever you have left sure. over from previous nights, just go ahead and dump it all in. Outstanding. The other thing that we have, I have three cups of green chilies. You bet. These you can just get from the store in the can. All right. That's perfect. Dump it now, in. how many is this going to feed ultimately? Clear the sizzle. Well, depending on how much you how like much green chili. How much you like to eat? <laughs> exactly. This is going to feed about four. Outstanding. So let's stir up our green chilies. Get everything yeah. mixed up Looks in there. Looks and smells delicious. Wow. And our next ingredient, I have one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Okay. Perfect. Dump that in. And colorful too, huh? And very colorful, very healthy for you. So once you get this all mixed up together, okay. you're going to want to put a lid on it. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. Then and you just, how long are we going to cook it? We're going to let it sit and cook like this for about 25 to 30 minutes. Let all of the flavors develop. Mm -hmm. While you do this, you can be running around with the kids, getting them to practice. Or sitting by fire, whatever. Sitting by fire, <laughs> get, you know, whatever you need to get done. Good. After about half an hour, yeah. everything will be all mixed up and well together. You want to okay. take it off your heat Yeah. and take it off. Take your lid off, and we're just going to add two tablespoons of oh, sour cream. You're going to add it in the mixture. And we're going to add it in the mixture, get it all Very mixed good. up, kind of rounds out the flavor, yeah. gives it a little creamy taste. Outstanding. I thought you were just going to put it on top of it, but that's great. No, nope, we're going to mix this in, but certainly if you wanted to sure. put more on extra. there, a little more <laughs> extra sour cream, you Perfect. are more than welcome. Oh, that, that absolutely looks delicious. So mix it up. And it appears that we've got actually a finished product right here. Absolutely. We have a finished product and we actually garnished. We did put more sour cream on this one. Mm -hmm. We topped it with some shredded cheddar cheese, some avocado diced, and some tortilla chips. That's great. What a perfect way to warm yourself from the inside out. Thanks for bringing us this great recipe. Thank you. To make your own beef green chili and find other great beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can always find them on our website. That's cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be back with more right after this. New Holland is smart for the way you farm. And New Holland Round Balers are smart for the way you raise cattle. By focusing on making the densest bale possible, New Holland Round Balers pack more into each bale, saving you time, fuel, and money. Now that's smart. We can also match your feeding requirements with a variety of bale slicing, cutting, and wrapping options to help maximize your time. Plus, with models designed specifically for silage or specialty crop harvest, New Holland gives you the power to make smart choices to fit your farm or ranch. You work hard to get the most out of every hay season to benefit you and your cattle. From mower conditioners to balers and tractors, New Holland has the right solutions to help you make quality hay and forage for your cattle operation. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all the benefits available to cattle producers. Don't miss the 2014 NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. It's your opportunity to meet with key congressional and federal agency influencers and to let them know where cattle men and women stand on critical issues that impact the cattle business and our way of life. Make plans to be in Washington, D.C. April 8th through the 10th for the 2014 NCBA Legislative Conference. Together, we can do more. Details at BeefUSA.org. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. 
Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. The world is on a diet. Seems no matter where you look, every fruit cake with a recipe has got a diet book. But I think if they were honest, I'll bet they'd all concede the omnivorous indifference of the cowboy's all you need. He's in tune with Mother Nature and can live off the land from the mountains of Montana to the muddy Rio Grande. He's the ultimate consumer. He'll eat anything he finds. Well, I've seen him lick the peel and paint off Forest Service signs or chew a steel fence post just to get down to the meat. He'll eat playing cards and bob wire. Anything a cow would eat. A drumstick from a buzzard. <laughs> or a wilted Christmas wreath. And then finish with a railroad spike just to pick his teeth. He'll drink water from a cow track, eat the claws of a grizzly bear, and you won't find no leftovers. He eats feathers, bone, and hair. He makes hunters run for cover. He scares hikers half to death, and he leaves no trace behind him. <sighs> just the smell of his bad breath. And if you doubt what I have told you, I assure you that it's right. I have painted you a picture of a cowboy's appetite. And though it may not look too pretty, it's exactly like I've drawn it. He'd probably eat a bale of hay if you put apple cider on it. So the world keeps on a jogging and a sipping diet pop. But the cowboy and his tapeworm ride the range and eat non-stop. So if you're overweight and worried, you should dine with him a while, because there ain't no chubby cowboys in existence in the wild. You can join me for dinner later. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks for that dietary advice, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you each week. Stay with us, we'll have legacy photos, a look at the National Ag Day event, and more right after this. We'll be right back. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA, they look at the facts, they look at the history, and they look what's good for the industry. It's important to be NCBA members just because of what NCBA does. They keep us informed about a lot of things that are going on nationwide. The reason we're an NCBA member is we think that it's the best voice that the cattle people have. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. Join your fellow cattlemen in sizzling hot San Antonio for the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the beef industry's biggest convention, and it's great for education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the NCBA Trade Show for the latest technology. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in sizzling hot San Antonio, Texas, February 4th through 7th. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. Welcome back. For this week's legacy photos, we're heading to the Price Ranch, home of the 2014 National Environmental Stewardship Award winner.
Don't forget, you can send us pictures of your farm or ranch by visiting our website, cattlemantocattlemen.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Today, the agriculture industry is working hard to produce food to feed the world's growing population. March 25th is National Ag Day, a chance to recognize and celebrate the contributions of agriculture. Celebrate American agriculture at the 2014 National Ag Day. It's March 25th in Washington, D.C. With 365 sunrises and 7 billion mouths to feed, this event honors the contributions of American agriculture to the world. I am optimistic about the future of agriculture. Doubling production is what we're going to have to do by 2050. I have no doubt of what we can do this. To learn more, visit agday.org. Next week on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll tell you how beef producers can help manage their risk of BRD. Plus, a closer look at the devastating drought conditions in California and what producers can do to find help. And we'll tell you about an award-winning operation in Texas. All that and much, much more, including another visit with our friend Baxter Black. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.